the present time. But I'm going to keep a lot of our focus here on what's happening in south central Kansas, of course, around Wichita. You can see some of the heavy rainfall that's south toward the Derby, Mulvane area. You've got some more heavy rainfall just west of Wellington. And same goes for what we're seeing in Harper County. But we're on the air with you because we do have this confirmed tornado just about ready to cross into southern sections of Cowley County. You can see the red outline there. That is our tornado warning. We've also got some large hail that's going to accompany the storm, too, uh, being picked up by the radar, uh, possibly up to the size of golf balls with that storm, again, near the Silverdale area or just east of our Kansas City. So this is the Kansas-Oklahoma state line. Again, Wichita right up here at the top part of your screen. We're looking at areas that are south and east of the Wichita area. It sounds like some nickel slice hail happening now in our Kansas City. Uh, but the area of concern for a tornado is going to be east of our Kansas City. Here's Highway 166. It's east of Highway 77. And over the last hour, uh, notice how the storm is evolving. It's mostly wrapped in rainfall. It's basically a, a curtain of rain that's going all the way around the rotating part of the storm, making it almost impossible to really get a good visual on it. But again, this is going to be east of Arc City here in the southern part of Cowley County. So for those of you in Dexter, you know, at this point in time, this is a storm to watch because it's in an environment where this thing could remain a tornado producing storm for several more minutes. And we may see some extension of the tornado warning farther north and east. For those of you in Cedarvale, same goes for you. Kind of keep an eye on this. But this entire complex of storms coming your way, and it's possible that we could be dealing with a, a tornado producing storm for several more minutes. And it's bringing you up to the current time. Again, where is the tornado at the moment? Uh, it's looking like it's just crossing the state line or about to cross the state line. There it is. Uh, this, In terms of where it is from Arc City, uh, we're talking about a distance uh, from the tornado to Arc City of about six or seven miles that it would be passing to your south and east. We'll go in a little closer here, get some more uh, roads maybe to pop on screen. Uh, there's Highway 77 connecting Arc City down to Newkirk, Oklahoma. And there you see 11th Road, uh, and there's a 312th Road. So those of you that live in this area are going to know what we're talking about. The tornado looks like it's just a mile or two south of the state line based on the latest radar sampling, which, of course, will be lagging what's happening in real time by just maybe, you know, a couple of minutes or so. So heads up here, Silverdale, two, 296th Road. Uh, this is where we're, and there's the new scan coming in on radar. Again, really looking like we're just about ready to see this thing cross over into south central sections of Cowley County. So if you're in that area east of Highway 77 and south of 166, uh, you need to be moving to a place of safety at this time because it does appear that we still have a tornado in progress in northern K County, Oklahoma. And now this tornado warning for south central uh, portions of Cowley County, a very dangerous storm that's underway at the moment. Uh, a little bit wider view again as we continue to track other thunderstorms happening in this particular area. Uh, we do not have any severe thunderstorm warnings that we need to tell you about in the Sumner County area and Winfield getting hit with some very heavy rainfall, perhaps maybe picking up some hail, dimes, or nickel size doesn't really stand out to me to be all that substantial in terms of the hail that we might be getting there in western Cowley County. And then farther north, again, we've got a lot of noisy weather happening in Butler County, some heavy rainfall from El Dorado down through the Augusta area. But from a statewide view, we'll just kind of set everything up because we've seen thunderstorms rapidly taking off up in north central Kansas and now we do have some new warnings to tell you about up here along I-70. This batch of storms uh, that we've been watching in the Russell County area now we've got a new severe thunderstorm warning in Ellis County and eastern Trigo County, a part of that severe thunderstorm warning as well. Over the last hour, see for yourself the stuff developing quickly, and mostly the individual cells are moving north, but the entire line is kind of shifting on to the north as well. Uh, we'll continue to see that overall movement. That is anticipated to continue for several more hours. And it's still possible that we could get a brief tornado in this part of the state too. We have not seen anything like that with the storms stretching from Ness County over toward Russell and, and portions of Mitchell County. Uh, but these storms, again, are pushing to the north. And the possibility there around the Hayes area, as we come up to the current time, we may be getting some larger hail on that storm in Ellis County. Let's go in a little bit closer and assess what the hail situation could be here in Ellis County. And it looks to me like we might be getting up to dimes, perhaps quarter size there, just to the south of Hayes. 
Let's bring on our hail estimation here and see what we can find here with this Ellis County storm. Not overly spectacular, probably less than one inch is what we're estimating here. Again, just to the south of the Hayes area, but Ellis County in a severe thunderstorm warning and the storms that are south of Hayes continue to move closer to town. So definitely want to stay indoors and stay away from windows as those storms get a little closer. We're not picking up on any significant rotation from that area. So we'll continue to provide some updated information on those severe thunderstorm warnings up there along I-70. But again, tornado warning continuing south central Cowley County. You can see this entire area uh, very active right now. We've got storms in Butler County and western Greenwood County. The storm off to the northwest of Eureka. Some heavy rainfall could be some small hail there. And then you You've got your heavier rainfall showing up southwest of Wichita, but a lot of focus is going to be on this Cowley County storm where, again, radar continues to pick up on uh, the active weather that's happening now just east of our Kansas City as we bring in the wind signatures here on radar. Maybe a little bit broader rotation suggesting a little less likelihood of an ongoing tornado, but we still have this uh, warning that goes as far north as the Dexter area as for exactly where this thing would be. So here you see Highway 166, there's 296th Road. So it's probably just in that area or slightly south of it. Definitely well east of Highway 77. As far as what kind of distance we may be looking at here from Highway 1, or I should say 77, we're about five or six miles east of there. And from 296th Road, maybe about three to four miles south. Again, the rotation kind of spanning out over a larger area, which may be suggestive of the, a little less likelihood that maybe we have an ongoing tornado at the moment. But uh, spotters in that area have lost sight of it based on what we're hearing from emergency managers in Cali County. Not a huge surprise because this is a high precipitation producing storm. And when you get that kind of environment, you can get this heavy rainfall that wraps all the way around the tornado, and it makes it very difficult to exactly see what is taking place. So this is where we have to really rely on the radar to kind of pick up on where the strongest uh, circulation is showing up. I understand that we do have Rodney Price. Uh, he's out in the Mobile Weather Lab. Uh, Rodney, can you give us an update? First of all, tell us where you are and what you've been able to see. All right, Ross, we, we, we are right now on U.S. Highway 166 and 29th Road. We're east of the 166 K-15 intersection in Cowley County. Here's a look uh, to the south and west. Now, I'm here with uh, meteorologist Adrian Campa. We are continuing to watch these storms here. Unfortunately, I can tell you that we have not been able to see a whole lot here at this time. It is very murky down here, a lot of moisture in the air, so a lot of haze that we're uh, looking off to our south and west. But we're certainly in that, uh, in that area where we've been watching, on radar at least, the rotation that's off to our south and west. But we have not been able to see anything visually as far as a wall cloud or lowering or anything like that. It's just way too murky at uh, so we're keeping a close eye on things and making sure we've got maybe a little bit more of a cushion between ourselves and the storm given the forward speed and just the overall visibility. Again, this is looking off to our south and west. There's Highway 166. That is looking more to the west. And I'll pan up just a little bit there. As you can see, we've got quite a few hills here. We're in the Flint Hills, so uh, we're trying to find a spot where we've got a little higher vantage point to be able to see. But currently, again, we're on, uh, there's a big bolt of lightning there in the camera frame. Uh, again, we are at 29th Road and U.S. Highway 166. We are south and east of Dexter and watching the back end of this storm. Unfortunately, again, Ross, so far have not been able to see a whole lot of features uh, to our south and west. Uh, but we're going to continue to watch not only the radar, but what we're seeing with our eyes here off to our south and west, Ross. And, and Rodney, before we let you go, of course, this storm also looks like it's capable of some hail. Did you encounter any of that as you were making your way over toward the Dexter area? Uh, no, we've been out ahead of everything so far. So we're, since we're in the, in the mobile weather lab, we're, we're trying to keep it pristine there. We're trying to stay away from hail. Uh, that is always a good thing, but so far... Uh, no, we've not encountered any hail, uh, just really haven't been able to see a whole lot of features, but we know that it's off to our south and west, so 
we're uh, keeping an eagle eye on it, to say the least. Okay. All right. Thanks very much. Uh, that's meteorologist Rodney Price and Adrian Campa in Mobile Weather Lab, and they are south of the Dexter area. Of course, the circulation that we've been picking up on uh, right there close to Highway 166. So we'll uh, continue to check in with Rodney and see if we get any updated information. To me, it looks like the rotation, again, expanding over a larger area. And what that means is maybe a little less likelihood that we've got an ongoing tornado at the present in time. And also because we've had some storms move through this area a little earlier this afternoon, you know, how does that change the environment and what is this storm going to do as it encounters a little bit of a rain-cooled environment? We simply don't have an answer to that. We're going to watch and see. But right here along 296th Road, and for those of you that are local to this area, you know, you're going to be able to pick out some of these, these roads and know exactly the location that we're talking about. But it's also important that we keep Dexter and Arkansas City in view. Of course, there's Strother Field and Cedarvale uh, bringing it over into Chautauqua County, but it looks like the rotation, again, is expanding into a larger area and not quite as tightly wrapped as it was maybe 10 or 15 minutes ago. But tornado warning continues for areas south of Dexter. This is, again, southern Cowley County. If you're just joining our coverage, this is the Kansas-Oklahoma state line, so we're nowhere close to Wichita, but those of you that live right there along Highway 15, 166 south of Dexter, you need to be moving to a place of safety in case the storm does have an ongoing tornado with it. Uh, but at the moment, it does appear that based on the returns that we're getting here on radar, maybe a little less likely scenario could be coming more of a wind and rain event that's taking place there in portions of Cowley County. Also getting some updated information here on storms farther north. The warnings for Butler County are now over with. Those warnings have been canceled. Those were severe thunderstorm warnings, by the way. We're kind of down to some heavy rainfall that we're dealing with there in Butler County, but also continuing with severe thunderstorm warning for northern uh, Greenwood County, just to the west of Madison, and then we get into some heavy rainfall up here around the Cottonwood Falls area. But just to show you from a statewide view uh, how everything is progressing this afternoon, we've got our tornado warning that's happening in southern Cowley County, and then you've got a lot of active weather that's starting to take off along and north of I-70, and more tornado warnings that are showing up down into parts of Oklahoma. So a lot happening this afternoon. Of course, this is probably still going to be a very busy four to six hours coming up for much of central and eastern Kansas as we've got storms working their way up from Oklahoma in south central Kansas now and then some active weather that's ongoing there to the north of I-70. There's the shot again from Mobile Weather Lab. We, uh, if you missed it a few minutes ago when we were checking in with Rodney, uh, we were not, he was not able to see uh, any kind of tornado at the moment. And again, this is Southern Cowley County that we're talking about. So this is a storm that's going to be south of the Dexter area as we go in a little closer. I'll get back in on that tornado warning that's in effect. Uh, actually, all of this started down near the Newkirk, Oklahoma area. And now it looks like uh, the rotation, uh, of course, we've got to switch and bring up a different radar view here. Uh, just to show you that a lot of heavy rainfall happening with the storm and the rotation now uh, south of Highway 166. Uh, the storm is uh, moving to the northeast. We did get some hail reported out of our Kansas City. That's the blue uh, circle that you see showing up there. It was smaller than one inch in diameter. And, of course, as Rodney mentioned in his report, they've been out ahead of this storm, so they are not able to provide any eyewitness account of the hail that is being produced from this storm, but it's a possibility that it could easily be up to the size of you know, half dollars or golf balls, but that's just based on a radar estimation, uh, not exactly based on any kind of ground truth there. But tornado warning continuing for Cowley County. Uh, this is a storm that has now crossed the state line and has made it almost entirely now into Cowley County. And as we go back over to the wind mode here of radar, maybe trying to ramp up again here south of Dexter, Again, right here along 296th Road, south of 166. You can see the reds and the greens matching up right next to each other. A little bit wider scale than what we saw 20 or 30 minutes ago. What does that mean? Well, sometimes we reference a figure skater when the rotation comes in closer to the center speeds up faster and faster. Same thing goes for a storm. When the rotation closes in tighter and tighter, more likely that you could get a tornado. At this vantage point here, you know, it's fairly spread out. Maybe we don't have an ongoing tornado, but hopefully if there is something taking place, uh, Rodney and Adrian kind of in the right position that they'll be able to provide, provide some updates here shortly if, in fact, that continues to be the case. Uh, something else we'll check in here on the hail that's uh, being produced for the storm. 
know, we mentioned that just a few minutes ago, uh, possibly golf ball size, uh, what we're estimating there, according to our computer, closer to quarter size right there in the southern part of Cowley County. Also, some very heavy rainfall. Uh, quick update here on what's uh, happening with the radar, uh, showing the estimated rainfall amounts and how heavy it may be coming down, perhaps to the tune of one to two inches per hour. So this is going to be some pretty substantial rainfall uh, right there along Highway 166. That'll just be another issue that we have to deal with. Of course, uh, we do need the rain. We're certainly excited about that. But today it does come with the risk of some severe weather there in South Central Cowley County. And the tornado warning continuing there east of Arc City. Looks like the tornado warning is no longer for northern sections of K County, Oklahoma, but some heavy rainfall happening in and around the Newkirk vicinity. Uh, so that's uh, something that we do need to keep a close watch on. Uh, no reports of damage that I'm able to see uh, from here. Of course, it's still very early in the afternoon. And uh, if the storm did produce a tornado, in fact, we, we do know that it did. If it hit anything, uh, we certainly don't know about that at this moment in time. We'll figure that out uh, as the afternoon continues to unfold. Getting a little noisy in and around Wichita again as we kind of set the stage on what's happening here across south central Kansas. You've got a lot of heavy rainfall south of Wichita over into Butler County. Also some heavier rainfall showing up just west of Caldwell but a lot of focus on that red outline right there. That is the tornado warning for South Central Cowley County, areas that are south of Dexter and well east of Arc City. You can safely say that if you're in Arc City, um, you're not going to be having a tornado. It's east of you if there's an ongoing tornado at the present time. And then the heavy rainfall extending right on up the turnpike and certainly northern uh, Greenwood County off to the north of Eureka, a possibility there of some larger hail. Severe thunderstorm warning continuing there, but the storm uh, looks like it is weakening. So for right now, let's uh, continue to keep our focus on what's happening there in south central Cowley County. Uh, we're staying with you here for a little while longer as we do have that ongoing report. We believe uh, still of a tornado in the area. Um, going to switch back over here into the wind mode and it looks like it would be south of highway 166 south of the dexter area well east of arc city and of course well west of cedar sure. vale at the moment and uh, this storm does continue to move mostly to what i'm looking at here it's kind of an east to northeasterly trajectory but watch over the last hour and see for yourself you can see the circulation that uh, now has crossed over into the area, uh, maybe trying to regenerate there south of Dexter. Uh, send it over to Peyton Sanders. Yeah, Ross, I just want to kind of give the big picture update on what we're looking at here. As uh, we were talking about earlier, some new thunderstorms developing in parts of western Kansas, too. A severe thunderstorm watch has been posted uh, for parts of northwest, uh, west central, and uh, north central Kansas until 9 o'clock tonight. Uh, that's the newest watch that we've seen issued. Then, of course, the tornado watch covers a broad portion of central and eastern in Kansas. Kind of what we're watching here is going to be uh, the southeast corner of our viewing area where there haven't been any thunderstorms so far today. And when you get that happening, that means the atmosphere is still unstable uh, versus around Wichita. We've seen temperatures cool down a little bit uh, with the thunderstorms that have passed on through over the past few hours. So we're still thinking that areas uh, southeast of the Kansas Turnpike, uh, parts of Cowley, Greenwood, Elk, and Chautauqua counties, well, for at least in the short term, we're going to have the highest severe weather threat as we loop the radar here, you can see those storms all lifting up in a northeasterly direction. There are some other thunderstorms here back to the west, though, around Enid and Medford, Oklahoma. Those are also lifting up toward the northeast. Those could clip Wichita with some more heavy rainfall and uh, possibly some large hail, too, as those storms uh, eventually start to move up into portions of uh, Sumner County, where a new severe thunderstorm warning has just been issued. As those thunderstorms continue to lift up toward the north, a hail threat with them uh, as they continue to move into uh, Sumner County. So we'll continue to monitor this thunderstorm activity, but uh, again, severe weather threat, uh, not over yet. We're going to be looking at this likely continuing for uh, at least a few more hours across parts of south central Kansas, and again, a few of those additional thunderstorms across parts of uh, north central into western Kansas. Ross? All right, thanks very much, Peyton. Again, keeping our focus on the storm south of Dexter at the moment, now looking like it's ramping up. New tornado warning just coming down. This is for southwestern Chautauqua County and southeast sections of Cowley County. And this is a, not a big surprise here because you can see the radars really picking up on this thing, ramping up once again there south of the Dexter area. We'll go in just a little closer here and try to get some more uh, roads to pop up here so you can know exactly what we're talking about. Again, it's south of Dexter, but 
going to be kind of a close call there. So this is 296th Road and Cedarvale, of course, uh, right there along Highway 166. The area of most concern looks to me like it's about eight miles uh, to the south of Dexter. Let's uh, get make sure that we're certain on that from the rotation to Dexter. Uh, yeah, about seven to eight miles or so to the south of town. So if you're south of Dexter along Highway 15, Right there along 166, you need to be moving to a place of safety. This is a storm that does have a history of producing a tornado. Uh, meteorologists uh, Rodney Price and Adrian Campa are in the Mobile Weather Lab, and they're down in this area, so we'll be efforting a chance to check in with them once again. At last check, they were southeast of Dexter. Uh, so now let's go ahead and take a look at their picture. Do we have uh, Rodney back with us at the moment? Okay, uh, Rodney, go ahead and give us an update here on what you've been able to see. Well, Ross, I can tell you here in, in the last couple of minutes, um, I don't know if, if, if the camera is really going to show it. We've got some fragmented clouds in there, and I'm really having a hard time seeing in there because we've got so much precipitation coming down. But I can certainly see what appears to be perhaps either some kind of, I don't know if it's a wall cloud or, or if we've got a little funnel in there. I'm not quite sure. Um, We've just got a whole lot of rain in there. It makes it really hard to discern. I'm going to try to zoom in just a little bit there. Uh, the contrast on the camera may help a little bit. Okay, again, we're looking off to our uh, west-southwest. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Again, this is looking west-southwest, so this is south of Highway 166. And... Oh boy, yeah, it's just it's it's just a mess right now. Um, we're t we're talking here with Adrian. Do you 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 got a second pair of eyes on that? Can you see anything? It just looks like the whole storm's rotating. It's yeah, it's it's hard to for sure to say what we've. Scud. There's yeah, there's Wait, some. Rodney, what's that right there? In the middle. Um. It's a little scud right there. Yeah, we've we've got we've got some. Low clouds and little scud fragments there of, of clouds, but boy, hard it is hard pressed Ross to see in there to see what we've got. We're gonna I'm gonna throw it back to you, so I'm not just rambling on here, and we'll try to see if we can see this a little bit better uh, as this gets just a little bit closer to us. But there's certainly a lot more cloud fragments that we're seeing now than opposed to, say, five minutes ago. Ross? Uh, okay, thanks very much, Rodney. Uh, of course, stay with us here, too. And if we can take Rodney's uh, picture full screen, we can talk maybe a little bit more about what he's uh, reporting on there. He was mentioning the cloud fragments. And, and really, to the untrained eye, you might look at this and say, well, there's the tornado, or maybe there's the tornado. Uh, not necessarily, because sometimes in these high precipitation environments, you will get these cloud fragments that do develop down below the base of the storm, and it can often look like a funnel or a tornado, but actually your heavy precipitation is over here on the right, and it does appear that you know we're going to need to watch uh, this back part of the storm. Now, you know, we've been reporting on these high precipitation storms and sometimes the moisture wraps all the way around it and there's a curtain of rain that obscures the view of the actual tornado. That is a possibility with the storm because it does have a lot of moisture to work with. But this is Highway 166 for anybody that's uh, not familiar with that area or maybe you live in this area and you're wondering, are we seeing a tornado? Well, at least not from this view, we're not able to pick that out. Uh, that would suggest to me because both Rodney and Adrian are, you know, they're traveling together and they're in an ideal spot to see if this storm is going to produce a tornado. So based on this view here, we don't believe there to be an ongoing tornado, but the rotation is really ramping up again. So let's go back over to the radar real quick here so we can kind of identify the area. Dexter, pretty close call, but it looks like if there's going to be a tornado with the storm, it's going to be just a couple of miles to the south of town. Cedarvale, you're in a tornado warning now too. Uh, looks like it would probably go west or northwest of you. But as we go in a little closer here, you're going to be able to see some of those roads popping up. There's 241st Road, 266th. It looks like it's just north of there, 232nd Road. So again, we're talking about an area that's south of Dexter, west of Cedarvale. It looks like the rotation uh, will stay well west of Cedarvale 
So I would say south of Dexter and areas just east of there, right here kind of on the northwest fringe of our tornado warning, uh, right there along Highway 15, uh, definitely need to be moving to a place of safety. If you've never been through this kind of situation before, below ground is your safest bet in case of a tornado. If that's not an option to you, closets and bathrooms are good places to go. Remember, you want to put as many walls between you and the approaching storm as you can. And you, of course, want to stay away from windows. That's something that we often see in the wake of tornadoes a lot and sometimes tremendous amounts of broken glass. And when you imagine shards of glass moving at 100 to 150 miles per hour, it is deadly. So in this kind of situation here, again, you need to be moving to a basement or a storm shelter if that's an option for you if that's not available closets and bathrooms good places to go you want to put as many walls again between you and the tornado as you possibly can so as we stay on the air with you here because we're analyzing these radar images as they come in uh, it looks like to me you know, if you're around Dexter, if you're in Dexter, probably not such a bad idea to be moving to a place of safety because if this storm is cycling and we, we see a new area of rotation or a new tornado produced out of it, it could very easily be right there just to the southwest of Dexter. Uh, out ahead of it, we may be picking up on some stronger wind. So if Rodney was right there along 166, he may be looking at some of the wind and the heavy rainfall affiliated with the storm and perhaps maybe the new tornado that develops out of it is going to be just to the south southwest of Dexter but again we're just you know watching as you are analyzing these uh, and there you see the new tornado warning uh, kind of our concern here if the storm is cycling and this new area that's showing up just to the southwest of, De of Dexter becomes our new tornado uh, we want everybody in Dexter to be safe we're talking about five or six miles to the southwest of town and that continues to move on to the northeast. Most of these are moving at about 30 or 35. So now Dexter falls into the tornado warning. And if we look a little farther east, it goes just east of Burden and areas west of Moline. Of course, uh, that area of southwestern Elk County. You, know, you guys had some severe weather yesterday, kind of back in the thick of it again today. So our initial circulation has kind of been uh, lost, if you will, kind of absorbed by the rest of the storm. And now it looks like our new area of concern is just to the southwest of Dexter. So let's kind of reorient ourselves and, and bring the radar back in a little bit closer. And there you see Grouse Creek Road. There's 232nd Road. Again, for some of us and most of us, maybe these are just numbers. But if you live in this area, uh, you know exactly what areas we are talking about. Let's go back to Rodney Price. Uh, Rodney, what have you been able to see? Well, Ross, uh, I've got the camera pointed now uh, off to our west, northwest. This is uh, north of US 166, so we're looking in that general direction, which would be either south or southwest of Dexter. And we've seen some very rapid cloud motion uh, with that. It's moving north and northeast. Um, given all the precipitation that we have, it's, it's hard-pressed to say exactly what we've got in there. I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit more, so bear with me. We've been really seeing the uh, radar returns really intensifying here. Let me zoom in a little bit more. We uh, appreciate your patience there. There, that's what we're looking at there, and we've got a hill uh, in the way, so I'm not sure exactly if that is something that is in contact with the ground, if it's anything that is rotating rapidly enough to do that, but we've seen a lot of very quick motion with that, and it's passing uh, off to our northwest. And Rodney, so that uh, is that bears some watching. It it says uh, yes. Go it ahead. Sa it sounds like uh, we are getting a report of a small tornado south of Dexter. So that m that could be what you're looking at. Obviously, from your vantage point, it might still be a little too far away. But I think you're looking right at the the area of concern. Yeah, uh, it's it's very suspicious looking. Like I said, we're we've got so much rain that's in there. Um, and unfortunately, we're kind of on a, on a lower spot here. We've got a hill in between us, so I'm not able to see if, you know, there's any kind of uh, ground transformers uh, lighting up or anything like that. But there is definitely something going on in there, Ross, for sure. Okay, let's stay with that picture. Uh, let's keep you... Let's keep you live here, Rodney, as we continue to watch with you, unless you okay. need to reposition. Uh, but it looks to me like we've got a developing tornado. Um, you know, obviously you guys are at a safe distance, but it sounds like uh, the tornado just to the south of Dexter. So if you're in Dexter, 
Uh, you need to be moving to a place of safety if you have not done that, but you're looking at live pictures coming from the mobile weather lab. Uh, we might need you to pan the camera a little bit more toward the right uh, so we can keep this in view as we keep both the radar and the live picture coming from Cowley County in view. If you're in Dexter, again, this is a storm that's moving, uh, getting very, very close to town now, and it sounds like from the emergency managers in Cowley County that they are uh, reporting a small tornado just to the south of Dexter. So uh, this is a very dangerous storm. Uh, we've seen the initial circulation uh, basically absorbed by the rest of the storm, and now a new area of circulation showing up just to the south of Dexter. If you're just joining our coverage, we continue with this uh, storm coverage here because we have an ongoing tornado situation happening in Cowley County. This is south and east of Wichita. If you're new to Wichita and you're not familiar with what area we're covering, again, this is well southeast of Wichita. It's east of Arkansas City. This is the Elk, or I should say the Chautauqua Cowley County line. So uh, this area south of Dexter, again, you need to be moving to a place of safety. I understand we have some pictures that have come in. Uh, maybe we can take a quick look at some of that. Okay, so here's some video of the heavy rainfall and some hail, uh, courtesy of Randy. Uh, we certainly appreciate those. Uh, this is up on I-70, so this is another area that we'll get covered. Uh, Peyton's checking in on some of those storms up around the Hayes area, so we'll get some uh, new information on those storms here momentarily. But if you can safely do so, that's really the most important part here, is if you're not in a safe position to send us pictures, send us video, Please don't. Your safety is of most concern to us, but we do welcome these kinds of things so we can showcase uh, what exactly is taking place with these Kansas thunderstorms. And today, unfortunately, that environment is capable of producing some of these larger tornadoes. Uh, let's go back over to the radar here real quick because, again, we're sticking with live pictures that you're looking at there on the left. Uh, Adrian Campa and Rodney Price are out there watching this Cowley County storm. Um, and then, again... If you're in Dexter, you need to be moving to a place of safety. Let's go over to Peyton. We're going to get an update on some of the other storms that are up there along I-70. Yeah, uh, we'll continue to monitor that activity passing uh, through Cowley County right now. You can see real quickly, uh, this is the icon tornado being reported uh, with that thunderstorm in Cowley County. So if you are in Dexter, take your tornado precautions right now. Uh, the area of circulation is uh, about to move very close to town. Uh, so let's hope this thing will lift uh, as it continues to lift toward the northeast. But uh, latest report uh, from the National Weather Service is a, a tornado on the ground here just southwest of Dexter. And it is uh, moving very close to Dexter, so you should uh, please be taking your tornado precautions uh, with this thunderstorm as we are getting confirmed reports that this tornado uh, is indeed on the ground. The rotation is increasing a little bit on the radar from where we are looking at about five minutes ago, so uh, this threat does continue into the eastern part of Cowley County. Just a quick update on the rest of, thunderstorms, rest of the thunderstorms across south central Kansas. We've got some rain around Wichita. They're all lifting toward the northeast. In general, it's more of a hail and wind threat with the other thunderstorms that are coming into parts of uh, Sumner County and then some more thunderstorms uh, back into north central Kansas uh, where we do find a severe thunderstorm warning there for Rooks County. Uh, isolated hail and wind threat with those thunderstorms. But again, right now, immediate concern is the Dexter area uh, with this confirmed tornado uh, heading in your direction. We'll keep you posted uh, and head back over to Ross with some additional information. All right. Thanks very much, Peyton. And as we continue to check in uh, with the Mobile Weather Lab again, uh, and, and Peyton had mentioned this too, the radar sampling of the storm in and around the Dexter area is ramping up. And that's not what we want to see as we have this storm moving in on Dexter. If you're in that immediate area, if you have not done so, you need to be moving to a place of safety. As we remind you, below ground is the safest place to get through a tornado. If that's not an option, closets and bathrooms, good places to go. Stay as far away from windows and doors as you possibly can. Put as many walls between you and the tornado. Also, put on a pair of shoes. You know, if you were to sustain significant damage in the wake of this storm, you don't want to come out and find yourself uh, walking around with no uh, foot protection because broken glass, there'll be all kinds of debris. Uh, we want to make sure that you're safe in the event you were hit uh, by a tornado. But at the moment, it does sound like we have a tornado happening at the present time near or just south of Dexter. That's where the radar is picking it up. You see live pictures coming from the Mobile Weather Lab. Again, meteorologists Rodney Price and Adrian Campa are both out there kind of watching the storm. They're together at a safe distance to provide live pictures. Don't try to go out 
and learn today how to chase a storm or spot a storm. Uh, let the trained professionals do it. Uh, what's very interesting to me in looking at these live pictures, if we can take this uh, view from the Mobile Weather Lab full, uh, it's very interesting because this is going to be your heavy precipitation over here on the left part of the screen. You know, is this the wall cloud? Well, it's really tough to say, at least at this vantage point. Over here, you have less precipitation, but this big curtain of rain that's coming down over here, you know, there may be something embedded in that that we're just not able to see. But these are high precipitation supercells, and they produce a tremendous amount of whether it be rain and hail, and it acts like a curtain, and getting an eyewitness account of what's happening in that is sometimes almost impossible. But they are of course, as meteorologists, they know exactly where to be and position themselves to get a good view of the storm. And these are live pictures, again, coming out of Cowley County, where we do have a tornado warning in effect near the Dexter area. Let's go back over to the radar because we've seen this expanded now and does include parts of Elk County. So the circulation near Dexter moving northeast, there's 270th road, 271st road, I should say, east of Dexter. Of course, Highway 15 is going to probably be the most notable landmark that we can point out there. But Dexter and moving to the northeast, uh, that would put it in the northeast part of Cowley County here over the next several minutes. And if it were to hold together, of course, next in line would be the southwest corner of Elk County, a very dangerous storm producing a lot of precipitation. And at least at this point in time, we still believe there to be uh, a tornado happening at the moment. Uh, we'll see if that changes here in the next five or 10 minutes, but radar is still sampling a pretty significant signature there uh, near the Dexter area moving to the Northeast. There you see Burden Falls just outside of the tornado warning. Uh, that's this outline, red and white outline that you're looking at here uh, from the National Weather Service suggesting that there does continue to be a confirmed tornado in that Dexter area. No threat to Wichita. This is all south and east of the Turnpike, all south and east of the metro area. But again, eastern Cowley County right now front and center for a lot of active weather. It sounds like we're getting some quarter size hail in Dexter at the present time. But the radar signature of a possible tornado uh, very much right over the city of Dexter and still moving on to the north and east. So tornado warning continues. And if you're in that area, we cannot give you the all clear yet. Uh, but hopefully the storm will begin to ramp down here shortly as uh, we're still dealing with some pretty active weather there in eastern sections um, of Cowley County. So taking a look here as we continue with live pictures coming from the mobile weather lab to see if we get a tornado out of that, uh, we'll certainly see it there. A lot of active weather, though, in eastern Cowley County and now western Chautauqua County, west of Cedarvale. If you're in Cedarvale, what's coming your way? Right now, it looks like it's going to be wind and heavy rainfall and maybe hail up to the size of quarters. The tornado threat is going to stay well to your north and west. So this tornado warning that does include the Cedarvale area uh, may be canceled here momentarily because the main threat is going to be north and west of you. Things kind of beginning to calm down in our Kansas City, but not for very long because you've got more active weather coming in from your west. This is about the only thing that's out there right now that we're really picking up on a significant amount of rotation in the Dexter area. Everything else looks like it's pretty much heavy rainfall, wind, and some hail at the moment. Uh, those live pictures again near Dexter coming from the Mobile Weather Lab. Uh, Rodney and Adrian continue to keep a close eye on things. We are not detecting or seeing a tornado from that view, uh, but a lot of heavy rainfall. So if we get a chance to check in with Rodney again here shortly, uh, would love to hear uh, what they have going on. So we do have a uh, meteorologist Rodney Price back on the line with us. And Rodney, as we continue to watch your live pictures, it looks like a lot of heavy precipitation. Have you seen any additional funnels? Yeah, it's it's been a lot of rain in here. Uh, you know, when the, uh, the little low rain went just to the north of 166, it looked like there might have been a small funnel, um, a little bit of a lowering there, but there's just so much rainfall wrapped up with this system that it's it's been very difficult it's not clear and cut like on some other days when well like yesterday the tornadoes that we saw in nebraska those you had no problem with visibility and seeing uh you know how big the, the tornado was today it's just very murky it's embedded in rain uh it's moving quickly we've been watching what we've really been trying to watch for is you know very quick upward motion that we were seeing with some of those clouds as they passed over 166. Uh, but right now, this, if you're wondering, this uh, view is kind of north northwest of the, uh, we just pulled off of uh, 166 here. We're probably about, oh, maybe about a mile or so to the uh, east 
of 29th Road and 166. Uh, so we're watching that. Uh, it's getting a little farther away from us. So if there's something in there, it's embedded in rain. We cannot see it. There's still a lot of precipitation. As I pan the camera around, this is looking off to the west along 166. And then, let me see here. This, we've, we've been watching. Now, you're going to see some of the uh, mobile weather lab here, so it may be a little harder to tell. Yeah, it's kind of in our way there. Uh, we've been watching what's going on uh, south of us. We've seen some lowerings, or at least what looks to be perhaps a rain-free base down there. Uh, that'll be something that we may have to scoot a little farther east here in just a little bit to uh, get a vantage point of that as it moves northeast towards our direction. But as far as the uh, feature in concern, uh, here we go back to the north-northwest, and that's part of that that we saw earlier uh, passing over U.S. Highway, one, Highway 166. Ross? Thanks very much, uh, Rodney uh, and Adrian out there in Mobile Weather Lab continuing to provide updated information. We still have a very impressive, and when I say that, meaning you know from a meteorological standpoint, when we're concerned about detecting tornadoes from the radar, uh, this is not good news. I mean, this storm still looks very ramped up right over Dexter, so we're certainly not in the clear, even though from those live pictures, as uh, Rodney was narrating over... Uh, we are not able to give the all clear. We need to get this storm east of Dexter, and we need to see this uh, thing ramp down a little bit more. But as of right now, we're still picking up on a pretty strong rotational signature right over Dexter, continuing to move to the northeast. We can safely say that if you're west of Highway 15, it looks like the threat of a tornado is now uh, behind us, but areas off to the east of Highway 15 and certainly northeast of Dexter, uh, you should be moving to a place of safety if you have not done so already. And then it gets into some fairly open country here northeast of Dexter, but farmsteads, anybody that you might know, friends and family that live in the country out here northeast of Dexter might be worth a text message, a phone call just to check in with them and make sure that they're well aware of what's coming their way. But setting up the location here, here's 271st Road and of course Highway 15, there's Highway 38, so we're south of that area at the present time. It's still moving on to the northeast. Okay, and there's the latest scan from the radar uh, starting to move in a better direction here. It's starting to see a little less rotation on this storm uh, now northeast of Dexter. We do have more storms coming out of parts of Oklahoma. Uh, let's send it over to Peyton Sanders for a quick update. That's right. Uh, the one tornado warning that we have in eastern Cowley County right now, but there are some additional thunderstorms coming out of north central sections of Oklahoma. And I'll let you see the loop here. This is a one hour loop of the radar picture. All these storms lifting up toward the northeast. Uh, we're kind of watching this area here for the next round coming in behind uh, what's currently in Cowley County. Those thunderstorms will affect probably parts of uh, Sumner and then eventually into parts of Cowley and Butler counties, maybe clipping parts of Sedgwick County too uh, with some hail and high winds. Uh, the thunderstorms that this first round here on the right that passed through uh, might have cooled the atmosphere a little bit, so still uncertain as to how intense those thunderstorms will be, but we're still not going to rule out hail and high winds as it looks like that's what it's producing right now as that will continue to lift toward the northeast here over the next couple of hours. Uh, we also do have severe thunderstorms back into north central Kansas. Can't forget about these. Uh, these currently are isolated hail producing thunderstorms uh, around Ellis County, parts of Trigo and Russell counties too, uh, lifting up toward the north. So a hail threat with those thunderstorms. Uh, big picture view again, we do have the severe thunderstorm watch, parts of uh, western and north central Kansas and pink. That goes until 9 o'clock and then the tornado watch continues until 7 p.m. in yellow for parts of central and eastern Kansas. Here's the updated future track data, and here it is right now. Thunderstorms in south central Kansas probably going to continue here uh, through the next few hours. Here's 5 p.m. We could see more waves of thunderstorm activity uh, from I-135 and generally around I-135 and uh, points off to the east. Again, additional severe weather will remain a possibility. And also notice we've got those storms across parts of north central back into western Kansas kind of flaring up uh, even more than what we have now. A hail and wind threat with some of that activity. And here's the rest of the evening how things look. 7 p.m. We've still got some scattered storms. 
thunderstorms around the state. And as late as 10 p.m., a few thunderstorms continuing. So uh, the severe weather threat far from over. We'll continue to see uh, that threat for hail and high winds, but again, possibly a couple tornadoes uh, as these thunderstorms continue uh, through the rest of the afternoon as we get into the evening hours. But again, for the time being, our storm of concern continues to be here into the eastern part of Cowley County. So heads up in Elk and Chautauqua counties. Uh, we're going to have to continue to monitor this storm as it's lifting up in a northeasterly direction. Ross? All right, thanks very much, Peyton. Something that I was picking up on is this area of circulation near the Dexter area begins to ramp down, which would indicate a weakening trend. Uh, something that may be starting to flare up a little bit more is what's happening southwest of the Cedarvale area. I'd be watching this area right on the Kansas-Oklahoma state line, and once again, this could become a new area of concern. Uh, why, the reason why this tornado warning is still happening for southeastern Cowley County over into western Chautauqua County could be something developing down here on the Kansas-Oklahoma on the state line. Again, not a guarantee that we're going to see something produced out of it, but it does appear that the storm is trying to organize here south of uh, 282 Road and, of course, south of 166. So if you're southwest of Cedarvale, uh, need to watch this area coming out of northern Oklahoma because this could turn into something, uh, be a little bit more intense than what it is right now from Cedarvale back to the southwest into the southeast corner of Cowley County. Again, an area that could be a come of concern over the next 15 or 20 minutes if we continue to see uh, this trend holding up. But as of right now, it looks like our storm up there near the Dexter area beginning to weaken just a bit with respect to the tornado warning. We'll kind of back things out here just a little bit. You can see this tornado warning, western Chautauqua County, and then the one for the Dexter area. But again, the circulation and the rotation itself uh, beginning to wind down just a little bit. Some more pictures coming in. We certainly do appreciate these uh, that we can share uh, of what's happening out there with these storms. And this is some of the action that we covered a little while ago up there on I-70 of some of the heavy rain and the hail. Not as high of a tornado threat in northern Kansas, but can't be completely ruled out this afternoon. Obviously, uh, what we're looking at here is mostly just the driving conditions up there on I-70 from some of those north-central Kansas storms uh, that we continue to uh, report and cover on. Uh, back over to the radar again, tornado warning does continue in western sections of Chautauqua County and eastern Cowley County, still very much an active location to be. Uh, if you're in that Dexter area, we don't want to completely give the all clear yet, but the latest radar returns uh, may be suggesting a little bit lower of a tornado threat, and that may continue to be the trend as this area gets kind of rain-cooled the overall environment may be less supportive of additional development out of this, but notice our bright greens and our bright reds are not matching up right next to each other, suggesting that the tornado threat may be coming down a little bit more. Uh, there we get a new scan of the radar. So this is wind blowing in toward Wichita, or basically wind coming in from the southeast. And the red is where the wind is coming from the northwest. And so that right there is our counterclockwise circulation that's happening now east of 281st Road. Uh, so based on this radar sampling here, maybe more of a wind concern along with heavy rainfall and a little less tornado threat. But this area in southwestern portions of Elk County, extreme northwestern Chautauqua County, Again, we don't want to completely say that the tornado threat is over with at the moment, but the radar trends, if you will, over the last five to ten minutes suggesting probably a little less likelihood that there's an ongoing tornado warning in this area. But warnings do continue, and we want you to be mindful of that as we go through the next several minutes. So. Two tornado warnings. This is what we have ongoing at the present time. If you're just now joining our coverage, we've got northeast Cowley County and extreme southwest Elk County. And then you've also got this area of southeastern Cowley County and western Chautauqua County that still is very active. So one circulation here. And as we mentioned just a couple of minutes ago, watching this area down here on the Kansas-Oklahoma state line, that could become our new dominant area of rotation. We'll see if that holds together. Of course, the Dexter area now may be moving in to more of a rain-cooled environment, less tornado potential here, but does something develop out of this down here on the Kansas-Oklahoma state line? Uh, right now, we can't say with a high level of certainty that that's going to be the case, but it is something that we continue to watch here on the radar trends and see what develops out of that over the next several minutes. We don't have any other tornado warnings to pass along at the moment. We'll hope that continues to hold up, but a lot of heavy rainfall and a lot of active weather to say the least. You can see there's our tornado warnings in eastern Cowley County, 
And then all of this active weather that's covering a good chunk of Sumner County down into northern Oklahoma. And as far as what's happening around Wichita right now, it's really kind of tamed down over the last couple of hours. You've got some heavy rain on the eastern side of the county and a good chunk of Butler County is pretty well covered in either some light or moderate rainfall, but nothing that we're you know, analyzing in Butler or Greenwood County showing any kind of rotation or any large hail. So most of our active weather right now that's getting a lot of our attention is what's now northeast of Dexter, soon to be southwestern Elk County, and then of course that area back to the west of Cedarvale. Radar suggests right now we probably don't have an ongoing tornado, but we want to keep the warnings up and keep those front and center because it's way too early to completely uh, sound the all clear or to let our guard down in that area of uh, that, uh, that part of the state. Okay, so we've got Rodney Price back on the line with us down near the Cedarvale area. Uh, Rodney, I've been seeing something that a little bit more of a concern coming off the Oklahoma State line. Uh, what have you been able to see? Yeah. Yeah, Ross, we are just east of Cedarvale now. We've repositioned uh, because of the uh, incoming rain and green skies that we had west of us. We hightailed it east. So again, we're east of Cedarvale. We found kind of a, a higher vantage point here. Um, we've got some trees, unfortunately, in blocking some of the horizon here, but looking off to our, our west and southwest, we certainly have a whole lot of rain. Uh, we've got some cloud bases we've been able to see at times. Let me make sure I've got the camera pointed in the right direction. Yeah, we've got you in about the area where we're watching. And um, so far, I have not been able to see anything from our, from our vantage point. But there is, uh, we can certainly see a, a base to this storm off to our southwest. There's quite a bit of rain in it, so hard to tell for sure if there's, you know, if there's anything that's uh, coming from that or not, or if that's just uh, some of the wind incoming, but uh, we've, we're back into uh, warmer air where we were last at. We had very cool rainy air that had hit our location and now we've returned to a southeast breeze and the air is quite a bit warmer. Again, we're east of Cedarville, probably uh, a mile or two. Higher vantage point looking off to our southwest in attempts to, to see if we've got anything there with that approaching storm off to our southwest, Ross. All right, thanks very much, Rodney and Adrian, his driver this afternoon. So two meteorologists in the mobile weather lab, uh, that's certainly something that you just don't find anywhere else. And we're certainly grateful for the eyewitness reports that are coming in this afternoon because we could, again, emphasis on could, see something additional develop there just to the southwest of Cedarvale. Northwest of there, you can kind of pick out the small hook, if you will, the, the radar signature of a possible tornado. Now it's been many minutes, I mean easily 15 minutes or so since we last had our confirmed tornado with this storm that was near the Dexter area and I have not been able to pick up on any reports of damage yet. May still be too soon for that sort of thing anyway because there's so much heavy rain that's moving through that particular location. But uh, not from Rodney and crew, but it does sound like there was an emergency manager in Cowley County that did report a brief tornado that was to the south of Dexter. We don't know if that clipped any part of the town or not. Uh, we're hoping that there's no real significant damage in the wake of that storm, but still very active there in eastern Cowley County and off to the southwest of Cedarvale. Just tremendous rainfall, too, and that's something that we've referenced from time to time when we talk about what the rainfall rate, how heavy is the rain coming down uh, based on what we're sampling here just to the east of the Dexter area. Uh, rain that would be coming down at more than an inch per hour is pretty significant stuff, uh, making it very difficult to try to navigate through some of that right there along Highway 166. But now east of Dexter, you don't only have that concern uh, northeast of Dexter of still some rotation within it, uh, but also you've got rainfall that's coming down at about an inch and a half to two inches per hour. Pretty significant stuff as you try to navigate down Highway 166 there in eastern Cowley County. So that's the rainfall rate. How heavy is the rain coming down? As far as what the hail might be doing in the storm, that hasn't been all that notable. We have not had any reports of significant. I mean, we're talking about golf ball size hail or baseball size hail. We haven't had anything like that and our radar is estimating hail size to be a little smaller than one inch in diameter. So this could be a high rainfall scenario 
and then of course the rotation that's still showing up off to the northeast of Dexter has started to weaken a bit, uh, not looking uh, nearly as impressive as it did, you know, a good 20 or 30 minutes ago, but still tornado warning continues in that area and still watching that area off to the southwest of Cedarvale uh, for something that additional may develop out of that. Uh, Peyton, you have some more information you want to add? Yeah, we're continuing to watch the, uh, the additional thunderstorms that are ongoing across uh, parts of south central Kansas at this time. As you take a look at the radar picture, so your thunderstorm warning for Sumner County. Uh, this thunderstorm doesn't look quite as impressive uh, as it did a few minutes ago, but there was still maybe a little bit of a hail core here into the southern part of Sumner County where we're seeing those darker shades of red. Uh, so we'll continue to watch that for a potential large hail, some gusty winds too, as those lift up uh, in a northeasterly direction. Uh, storms in the eastern part of Sedgwick County are not severe. They're just producing some heavy rainfall at this time. Uh, but we do have a few more severe thunderstorm warnings back up into north central Kansas as we take a look at Osborne and portions of uh, Russell counties. This thunderstorm does look like it could be producing some hail uh, there northwest of the Paradise area. And you can see that is lifting up in a south to north direction uh, there in north central Kansas. So uh, some isolated severe weather threat will remain possible uh, across parts of north central back into western Kansas over the next few hours. And then uh, really what looks like it's going to happen, just looking at some of the new data uh, that comes in each hour, uh, really looks like the severe weather threat will focus uh, for areas along and east of I-135 over the next few hours uh, with these strongest thunderstorms. And then we'll have the isolated severe weather threat here across uh, parts of north central uh, back into western Kansas with new storms that are developing. Uh, so still could be several hours of some severe weather. As far as whether or not we're going to see a high-end tornado threat, um, that is still yet to be seen, but kind of based on what we're seeing here, uh, we've been talking about this in the Storm Center today, uh, these storms are all kind of merged together. They're not individual cells. And when you get that happening, that can kind of limit the tornado threat. But what we're seeing here on the eastern fringe, uh, this is where the atmosphere is kind of the most unstable. There haven't been any storms working their way into parts of southeast Kansas so far today. And that's kind of reason why these storms are a little bit stronger, uh, still producing that isolated tornado potential. So as far as a big time tornado outbreak today, uh, that might be kind of downtrending at this point. Point, but we still can't entirely rule out that possibility uh, for a couple isolated tornadoes with thunderstorms uh, through the rest of the afternoon and evening hours. But again, some beneficial rainfall uh, with these thunderstorms too. Look at the radar estimates here across parts of south central Kansas, uh, southern parts of Sumner County about one to two inches being uh, estimated by the radar. Again, that's just an estimate, but up to about an inch in the dark shade of green across portions of uh, Butler County, too. So some uh, healthy rainfall across parts of south central Kansas. A few hours of it so far this afternoon uh, in the south central part of the state. So uh, that's some welcome news. We don't need the severe weather with it, uh, but some uh, beneficial rains coming in with these thunderstorms. But as Ross has been mentioning, uh, on these thunderstorms, uh, they're kind of a brief downtrend in the tornado uh, ro or the uh, rotation on radar I should say uh, but we still can't entirely rule out that possibility that's why the tornado warnings have not been canceled yet uh, they are ongoing here for eastern sections of Cowley County and the portions of Elk and Chautauqua counties we just have to continue to keep a close eye on uh, this part of the thunderstorm activity as it continues to move in, in a northeasterly direction uh, see if something might start to tighten back up again uh, we can't entirely rule out that possibility so uh, we'll continue to monitor this uh, thunderstorm activity as it lifts northeast. Ross? Yeah, that's uh, something I was noticing too. That storm that's now approaching the Granola area, that's going to be up here in the southwest corner of Elk County here, west of Moline. Uh, still radar signature not suggesting that we probably have an ongoing tornado happening right now, but the warnings do stay up because there's still that broad area of rotation which could develop into something more than it is right now. Uh, but at the present time, it looks like uh, maybe that has weakened just a little bit. We'll keep an eye on that. But also watching the storm down near the Chautauqua County area. Let's send it back out to meteorologist Rodney Price. Okay, Ross. Uh, yeah, looking off to our southwest here, we have stopped now. Uh, we are about three, two to three miles east of Cedarville in Chautauqua County, and we've got the camera pointed off to our southwest, what appears to be a, a wall cloud here to our southwest. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit, and we can see uh, certainly this area we've had um, 
a little lowered part of the cloud. I have not seen anything that would resemble funnels or anything like that, uh, but nonetheless, that is uh, an area of, a, of, a, of concern that Adrian and I both saw. Um, let me move that camera over just a little bit. Uh, getting a little murky again, but it, it's in that area. I'm going to pan back out here and got a lot of lightning, so we're staying close to the vehicle, as you can imagine. Uh, maybe a little more fragmented in there now compared to perhaps five minutes ago, but uh, it's certainly we are certainly into um, the air here is uh, very warm. It's very moist. It's not rain cooled as of this point. So uh, it is certainly a feature that we're watching because that'll give it the uh, energy that it needs. Again, we're in the area uh, to the south or to the east rather of Cedarville. Uh, looking off to our south and west. I want to zoom back out here real quickly and get this uh, line of storms. It's very dark, very greenish color here to our east. And there you can see some of the lower clouds there panning towards the road. That's U.S. Highway 166. And I don't believe that is anything that's in contact with the ground. I can see Adrian's looking at it too. Uh, we've got some hills in the way. I I don't think that that is something that is tornadic, but that's something we're going to we're going to watch as well. Again, watching that that's along and north of uh, 166, and then the feature that we're watching again off to our southwest, which has an unimpeded uh, flow of moisture into it, so certainly a candidate to strengthen just a little bit more, Ross. And and Rodney, that view that you had uh, just 30 seconds ago was that looking to your northwest? It is. It's kind of west-northwest. Okay. Let me get it back there for you. There you go. Uh, okay. It's it's certainly got... Uh, it's, it's definitely lowered, but it's kind of on the front edge of this, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not for sure that it's anything of too much concern, but we're going to watch it here. Uh, that's the key to watch it for a few minutes and, and see if we've got any kind of changes with that see if we if there's any kind of rotation or anything we we would want that to persist for a while if if it's going to spin up it's not something that will uh, you know appear out of out of the, the clear blue sky it's something that'll take a little time to organize into something but we'll watch that for sure and like i said that uh little lowering that we had off to our southwest. Okay. All right. Thanks very much. Uh, that's meteorologist Rodney Price watching the storm. He's actually located east of Cedarvale looking back toward the west. So to me, it looks like we've got two areas that are still of concern. You've got one that's the northwest corner of Chautauqua County, another one that's just outside of Cedarvale. At the moment, no confirmed tornado. We'll see how long that holds up. We'll see if this environment uh, turns into anything more than it is now, which is basically a couple of areas of rotation, but we don't believe there to be an ongoing tornado, but this could change very quickly. This, of course, was the circulation that went right over Dexter and it's trying to organize again. It's really trying to get itself back together there in extreme north. Okay, this uh, radar signature here kind of suggesting that it's really trying now to organize there northwest Chautauqua County, extreme southwest Elk County. So if you're west of Moline near the Granola area, you need to be moving to a place of safety if you have not done so already. We do not at this point in time believe there to be a confirmed tornado, but it's really trying to get the circulation back together. And we'll see if this goes on and uh, produces a tornado from where we are right now. But Rodney's in a really good spot that if it's going to produce a tornado, he's going to be one of the first people to be able to see it. Obviously, uh, trying to uh, deal with that hill that's right there in front of him as they look back toward the west at both this area of circulation that's showing up just to the southwest of Granola and then the other area that has kind of caught our attention too now just straight west of Cedarvale right there along highway 166 that's the highway that uh, was right there in their view and they're looking back to the southwest now so from just east of Cedarvale they would be looking at this area of rotation that's just kind of right on the Cowley Chautauqua County line uh, we don't know yet if it's going to develop any further from where it is now, but Rodney had mentioned the unimpeded flow of humidity coming up into the storm, and what he's referencing is the fact that when we look at the overall environment and the storm structure here of how this is all set up, you've got 
air coming in from the southeast and there are no thunderstorms south of it to block that flow of moisture coming into the storm. And usually when we're tracking big storms like this, if it's got an uninterrupted supply of humidity, sometimes the storm will take a right turn and turn into that feed of moisture. And usually when we see that, the concern for a tornado does increase a bit. They're right turning supercells they turn into the direction that the moisture is feeding them right there along Highway 166. We don't know if this storm is going to do that, but it does uh, something that we see quite often with some of these bigger thunderstorms. So two areas of concern, again, that we're watching right now, just west of Moline, out near the Granola area, and then also what's happening in and around the Cedarvale location. Two tornado warnings, two separate areas to keep an eye on. At the moment, we don't believe there to be an ongoing tornado at the moment, but this could change very quickly given the environment that we've been dealing with today. As far as what else is happening around South Central Kansas, it looks like we have this other tornado warning. Let's go ahead and get it updated on that because that's now uh, northeast of Newkirk, Oklahoma, an area that was kind of in the thick of things over an hour ago, and now northeast of Newkirk east of Highway 77. This is a little bit farther south uh, than the initial storm was about an hour and a half ago. And now that is coming back uh, into the Silverdale area. Um, almost similar track as the one that we saw just, uh, again, about an hour and a half ago. Uh, let's see what we've got as far as the rotation is concerned with this storm northeast of Newkirk. Uh, nowhere close to the radar signature that we had with the initial one again earlier this afternoon but right there right on the kansas oklahoma state line we are right back into a tornado warning uh, as that storm is getting ready to cross into south central and southeast cowley county so we could see an additional warning coming for that but as far as uh, what we're still looking at here uh, this area this is a big rotating storm right now west of the moline area right on here uh, straddling the chautauqua cali elk county line right there where those counties all kind of come together is where we have it pinned this is north of highway 166 and then the other area of concern is just west or northwest of the cedarvale area mostly to the north of 166. Again, a couple features there from the radar vantage point that would be a bit concerning. If you're in Cedarvale or west of Moline near the Granola vicinity, uh, you want to be in a place of safety. Remember, that's below ground in a basement if possible. If that's not an option, closets, bathrooms, good places to go with as many walls between you and the approaching storm as you can get. Obviously, have a pair of shoes on, uh, not a bad idea to wrap yourself up in pillows and blankets. If this storm goes on to produce a tornado, uh, it's in an environment where it's something that could be on the ground for many minutes. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but that's just kind of the nature of what we're dealing with today with all the wind and the humidity and all the necessary ingredients coming together. Uh, as we kind of look for any other rotating storms out there, uh, basically that's what we've got. Western Chautauqua County, southwest corner of Elk County, and then that one little cell that's uh, southeast of Arc City coming out of northern K County, Oklahoma. Uh, we are once again uh, carefully watching to see where that thing goes uh, as it may prompt a new tornado warning for parts of... Uh, Okay, now it sounds like they are putting out that new tornado warning for South Central Cowley County. Not a big surprise there. Uh, some of the areas that were in the thick of it a little while ago uh, now facing yet another uh, tornado warning that's coming down near the Silverdale area, south of there, right on the Kansas-Oklahoma state line. Again, the radar not quite as hot uh, with the outbounds and the inbounds, the circulation showing the tornado uh, right on the state line, but uh, an area that we do need to continue to carefully monitor as that warning pops up there for South Central Cali County. Uh, we'll send it back over to Peyton with some updated information here on uh, some other information he's been able to gather. Yeah, we're just continuing to watch all this activity in South Central into Southeast Kansas. Uh, this is likely going to be the severe weather threat over the next few hours uh, for at least the higher potential. There are still going to be those thunderstorms in parts of North Central back into Western Kansas that could produce some severe hail and wind. Uh, can't entirely rule out a tornado with those storms, but the uh, higher tornado threat is going to be here focused Southeast of the Kansas Turnpike uh, over the next few hours. And just kind of an even wider view of from what we're showing you out of the Kansas activity. There are some more storms down in Oklahoma and uh, some of this activity is going to be moving up uh, into portions of southeast Kansas, uh, southeast of the Kansas Turnpike over the next few hours. So again, hail and wind threats, but even an isolated tornado or two uh, cannot be ruled out for the time being. Those storms are just east of Wichita. And then here's uh, kind of the secondary area that we're watching in parts of north central Kansas. Uh, here's Osborne County. Uh, this is where we're watching for the possibility for some large hail. And you can see the loop on the radar picture over the past one 
one hour. That's lifting up toward the north, so heads up in Osborne. Uh, some large hail will be possible uh, here in a bit as that storm continues to head in your direction. I was just checking in with some of our storm chasers. Uh, some of them are out watching that stuff uh, that's currently southeast of the turnpike. Uh, we do have Storm Team 12 chasers uh, Scott Roberts and Lance Ferguson. Uh, they are in the Medicine Lodge area, uh, kind of watching this dry line that's going to be uh, positioning itself uh, between uh, Dodge City and uh, Greensburg and uh, the Pratt area, kind of that general vicinity. Uh, that's kind of... Uh, that's kind of where we're going to be watching for the possibility of uh, maybe a additional thunderstorm or two that could develop. Uh, not a guarantee that that's going to happen, but they are positioned there uh, that if something does develop, kind of renewed uh, outside of what's been ongoing this afternoon, uh, that could potentially uh, lead to some more severe weather. So we'll just keep an eye on things. Currently, uh, not seeing that at the moment. Uh, what, what we do have is across parts of north central back into western Kansas are a few isolated thunderstorms. Again, the severe weather threat uh, for the meantime is highest over portions of uh, Cowley into now crossing into Elk and Chautauqua counties. So uh, Howard and Sedan, I think this will, for now we'll say northwest of Sedan, but uh, potentially the Howard area uh, do need to keep a close watch on these thunderstorms storms as they keep lifting up toward the northeast with that potential uh, tornadic threat. We also have a large hail concern, a little bit larger than one inch in diameter uh, with these thunderstorms in addition to the rotation that we're watching on radar. But again, as Ross mentioned, it's been a little while now since we've had a confirmed report of a tornado uh, at the present time. We're just seeing increased rotation on radar and something we're going to have to watch carefully as these storms continue to lift up toward the northeast. Ross? In addition to everything else that we've been looking at, too, we don't want to overlook the uh, heavy rainfall potential because we're now getting reports of rain uh, estimates uh, coming in of about an inch and a half to two inches per hour. And as we back the radar out, we'll take a look at this because we've got one complex of storms following another. So you've got the tornado warnings happening in eastern Cowley County and then right behind it more big rain producing storms that are coming in and we could be dealing with at least some localized flooding. I know many areas are bone dry so we can take on quite a bit of water but when it comes in a short amount of time we start to get into some other concerns of at least some ditches filling up temporarily with some uh, high water. Now we don't have reports of flooding that we need to pass along but because these storms out here have already produced about an inch and a half to two inches of rain and then right behind it you've got more big rain coming out of eastern Sumner County that does raise the concern of at least some short-term flooding potential there for areas that are south and east of Wichita. But at the moment, a lot of focus happening on Cowley County, western Chautauqua, and southwestern Elk Counties. This area has had rotating storms now for at least 45 minutes or so. And as we go back in on this storm that's to the southwest of Howard, we're still picking up on a pretty broad area of rotation happening right there in the Granola area west of Moline, uh, kind of expanding over a larger area. So this might be more of a heavy rain and wind scenario, but these storms will sometimes go through a cycling phase where they produce a tornado and then it's like they have to take a little bit of a break and reorganize and then maybe later on in its life cycle they'll go on and produce another tornado but right now the circulation is right there along highway 160 or just slightly south of the highway uh, near the granola area west of Moline this could prompt some additional tornado warnings coming out of uh, southern sections of Elk County and perhaps maybe some of northern Cowley or I should say Chautauqua County the area that we were watching there near Cedarvale kind of ramping down. So I'm a little less concerned about a developing tornado north of Highway 166, but we'll continue to continue to uh, sample that storm a little bit longer and see what is the trend there. And maybe that warning will be allowed to expire or canceled early because it looks like just to the northwest of Cedarvale, things are not looking uh, quite as threatening with respect to a developing tornado there. That's kind of where Rodney and Adrian were watching the storms a little while ago. Uh, back over to the mobile weather lab, and we're getting uh, more live pictures. So, Rodney, go ahead and give us an update. Have you guys repositioned? Uh, no. Ross, we're still about two to three miles east of Cedarvale. And one thing that has, and we may have a big rumble of thunder here in just a second, um, what we've noticed here in like the last two minutes is an abrupt change. The storm seems, at least at the current time, we've got cool outflow winds hitting us in the face. Uh, when we arrived here, we had a southeast wind uh, and it was still quite warm, but it has certainly cooled down a little bit since uh, we got here. Our thermometer on the uh, car says 74 degrees, so that's down from a little bit 
Um, I mean, we're seeing that rotation you've been talking about on radar off to our north, but right now, uh, what we've been able to see, and I've got the camera pointed on that, but at least here at this location, the air is very cool and in our face and coming from the west. Ross? Okay, thanks very much, Rodney. We have a new tornado warning that we need to pass along, and this is going to be up here in Elk County from Moline up toward the Howard area. Uh, this is something that we were alerting you to just about two minutes ago, the circulation near the Granola area right there along Highway 160, and that is now moving kind of, well, still basically to the northeast. Uh, my estimation here is that we're probably at around 25 to 30 miles per hour. Uh, still fairly intense. Uh, over a larger area. So I don't know that we would say that there's an ongoing tornado with this particular uh, cell that we're tracking there near Granola, but it does continue to uh, be noteworthy, if you will. You can see the wind that's blowing in toward Wichita's radar and the red that's blowing out. And that counterclockwise circulation is where we would be most concerned about the possibility of something developing a little further. Now, again, at the present time, we don't believe there to be a tornado. But as we bring granola into view, uh, there's 160. Uh, there you see road 5. So maybe that will help you kind of figure out exactly what areas. But circulation is really right over granola at the present time. Moline falls into the tornado warning, and Howard does too. But everything is still well to your west. And as far as what kind of distance we're talking about from from the circulation to Moline, we're about seven to eight miles away. And then from the circulation to Howard, about 12 miles distance uh, separating you between the area of concern. And this uh, mostly looks like it's uh, trying to move to the northeast. So this is the same storm that we watched move across most of Cowley County, went right over Dexter, had a uh, last Based on my account, our last tornado, confirmed tornado, was south of Dexter, and that's easily been a half an hour or so ago. And now that area has shifted completely into the southwest corner of Elk County, continuing to move on to the northeast. And still a pretty potent thunderstorm, even though it doesn't have what we believe to be an ongoing tornado at the present time. It's still one that has uh, got our attention. Now, Rodney and Adrian were east of Cedarvale, kind of looking back at this storm, and Rodney had mentioned the rain-cooled air that was advancing out underneath of the storm, and that's really key because when you start to get that cooler air coming out beneath the base of the storm, it tends to lower the tornado potential. It doesn't always completely diminish it, but it does, at least in the short term, lead you to believe that this storm west and in the Cedarvale area probably not going to go on and produce a tornado, and certainly the radar are, uh, would back that up based on what we have right now. Even the storm back here farther west that prompted a new tornado warning in Cowley County is moving into a rain-cooled environment. Cooler the air, less likelihood to get a tornado, and that's why I think that storm that's now to the northeast of Arc City is probably not going to be a candidate to produce additional tornadoes. We did have that warning down northeast of Newkirk, Oklahoma. It crossed over and got into Kansas, and now it's running into an environment that's completely disturbed by all of this active weather, and that lowers the tornado potential. But still an ongoing heavy rain event, and still likely that we're probably going to get some larger hail out of it, maybe up to the size of half dollars from that storm that's northeast of Arc City. So the one storm that has really got our attention right now, the possible uh, developing you know, what could be a tornado threat is west of Moline and southwest of the Howard area. You still see that inflow notch. So how this works with these storms, when we track them and we, you know, based on how the meteorology works with this, you have warm, humid air that comes up into the storm, and then the backside is rotating like this. And that's why we have that notch that's showing up southwest of Howard, west of Moline, right there along 160. Uh, that is what we're looking at as far as the rotating storm is concerned. And when we bring on the wind indicators here to kind of get a better sampling of it, look inside the storm, how the wind is shifting and switching around, it's right there west of Moline, again, by about five or six miles and well to the southwest of Howard. If you're in these locations, just a reminder about what you do. You go below ground. Many of us have lived in Kansas for a long time, and it feels like this is old information. But for those of you that are new to Kansas and have never been through a tornado warning, below ground, bathrooms, closets, good places to be. You want to have as many walls between you and the approaching storm because when you do that, every wall just adds another layer of protection from something that can be flying around, whether it be broken glass, whether it be shingles, trees, you simply don't know, but you want to offer up as much protection as possible, and that's by putting several walls between you and the approaching storm. 
And of course, stay away from windows and doors, as we often see in the event of tornadoes. Sometimes you can get uh, broken glass and often get broken glass that can prove to be quite deadly. So this area basically bounded uh, north by this uh, Highway 160. And then, of course, the areas west of Highway 99, this southwest Elk County, northwest Chautauqua County, is still a pretty rough area to be in right now, even though based on what we're looking at here from a radar view, uh, probably not dealing with a tornado in progress at the moment, uh, but this could change very quickly as the storm continues to move on to the northeast. A lot of heavy rainfall happening with these storms, too. Uh, it's been a little while since we checked the rainfall rate. Again, how heavy is the rain coming down? Well, in some of these areas back here, to the southwest of Howard, to the west of Moline, north of the Granola area. Uh, rain could be coming down at greater than two inches per hour, and it's not in a big hurry to get out of that location. So that's why we did start to raise the concern of some flooding, because you not only have this cluster of storms that's coming on through, but right behind it, you've got more active weather out here in western Cowley County and eastern Sumner County, and all of that is coming your way. So we could easily wind up with some three to perhaps four or five inch rainfall totals when all of this active weather is completely over with. I know some of you would love to get a good three or four inch rain, but uh, most of it is confined to areas south and east of the Turnpike at the present time. Three tornado warnings, northwest Chautauqua County, much of Elk County, and then this warning that's in effect for Cowley County. Uh, this one that's in Cowley County, my suspicion is we'll probably see that one dropped here shortly. And then we'll also uh, probably see this warning for the Cedarvale area. That may be going away shortly. Really, most of our focus needs to be on the Elk County storm, where, again, southwest of the Howard area, we do continue to pick up on some rotation. Uh, Peyton, you've got some more to add? Yeah, uh, let's take another look at the updated feature track that just came in. We're tracking those main clusters across parts of South Central and the Southeast Kansas, likely going to last for a few more hours, especially east of I-135. Um, but what kind of what we're kind of watching is some additional thunderstorms that will be possible northwest into North Central Kansas, a hail and wind threat with a few of those isolated storms. But take a look at what's happening here on feature track. Uh, let me clear that off. Dodge, just east of Dodge City, uh, very small little thunderstorm trying to develop there. That's along the dry line, and that's uh, kind of another additional area that we're going to be watching where we don't currently have thunderstorms, but uh, kind of where we're going to watch for a possibility of some additional development through the evening. Storm Team 12 uh, Storm Chasers, Scott Roberts and Lance Ferguson are in Medicine Lodge. They're kind of watching that dry line to see if something is going to develop there, but it's not a guarantee at this point. Here's how things will look by 7 p.m. We think what's ongoing right now across South Central Kansas is going to start to exit into the far eastern parts of our viewing area, so Eureka will likely be dealing with some thunderstorms by then. Still some scattered activity northwest into north central Kansas. And then it looks like by 10 o'clock tonight, a lot of the severe weather is starting to wind down. And then uh, we'll start to, we could see a few more thunderstorms overnight, but uh, the later we get into the evening and overnight hours, a severe weather threat uh, looks less likely. So currently, a tornado watch in effect until 7 p.m. in yellow for parts of central and eastern Kansas. And then north central into western Kansas, that severe thunderstorm watch uh, goes until 9 p.m. tonight. But as we look again at the radar picture just right now, the most imminent threat is with these tornado warnings. Again, as Ross mentioned, uh, kind of the storm of the moment is in Elk County. As we were mentioning, heads up in Howard, uh, now under the tornado warning. Large hail, uh, probably still another concern that we're looking at with this thunderstorm there. Uh, south of the Moline area and toward Howard, uh, that could be an additional threat in addition to the rotation that we're watching on radar here into the uh, western part, southwestern part of uh, Elk County at this time. Again, the area of kind of broad rotation that we're looking at is right there just west of Moline and heading up toward the Howard area. So if you do live in Elk County, I want to continue to keep a close eye on this thunderstorm. Again, earlier uh, this afternoon, we did have the confirmed reports of the tornado uh, in Cowley County. Uh, Based on what we're seeing now, we have not been able to confirm that. But also, you kind of look at the circled area there. That's the area of rotation. You match it up with where it's raining, and it's probably going to be very hard to see if this tornado is actually on the, if there is a tornado on the ground, I should say, uh, because it would likely be wrapped in rain. So something we'll keep watching as this thunderstorm continues to move up toward the northeast. But again, in Moline and the Howard areas, uh, remain in your storm shelters as we continue to watch this thunderstorm uh, lift up in a northeasterly direction. Ross? 
All right, thanks very much, Peyton. It looks like uh, the storm in Cowley County, as we've been reporting on, has started to weaken quite a bit. That warning is probably a goner here shortly. And northwestern Chautauqua County, again, that area of rotation also ramping down. But there's just a lot of heavy rainfall happening with these storms, and so we don't want to completely overlook the idea that some of you will have to deal with flooding south and east of the turnpike. All of these storm markers that are showing up on here, those are actual eyewitness accounts. Somebody that reports large hail, somebody that reports heavy rain, and then, of course, the little red marker there, that was the confirmed tornado from earlier this afternoon. So those will occasionally pop up here on the radar, uh, indicating to us as we go through continuous coverage that something has been confirmed. And then that allows us to check in a little bit closer on what has actually been reported. But at the moment, again, on the front end of this complex of storms, we still have the tornado warning in Elk County. And as soon as we see a little bit better indication of that thing ramping down or weakening, if you will, uh, we'll wrap up our coverage here as we're dealing with mostly severe thunderstorm warnings, but we do have these ongoing tornado warnings in western Chautauqua County, where again, the storm that is northwest of Cedar Vale, not looking all that intense. It may have some hail with it, but as far as a tornado is concerned, which is where that red box is, we're just not picking up on substantial rotation. Now you see the tornado warning disappearing from Cowley County, so that has been canceled. Some good news to pass along there. This is really the beast at the moment, and it's the one that's west of Howard in Elk County. That is where we're still picking up on rotation. What's fascinating from a meteorological standpoint is how long this storm has been rotating. It started down near Newkirk, Oklahoma, and now we're coming up on what is almost two hours that this storm has been rotating. It went all the way across the southeast corner of Cowley, County went over Dexter and now we've got it in the Granola Moline west of Howard area and that is not uncommon for storms to rotate for hours and we're still uh, picking up on this storm here that's just to the south of Howard. Let's check in with meteorologist Rodney Price and uh, Rodney we see you guys are back on the move. Uh, tell us where you are and exactly where you're headed. Okay Ross we are traveling east on US 166 we are heading in the uh, general direction of Sedan uh, and then plan to go north on K99 towards uh, Moline and uh, the Howard areas. Uh, we're probably going to be in a point here once we get north of Sedan that uh, we're probably not going to be able to get around, say, on the front side of the storm before it crosses the highway. But at least at this point, we're going to make an attempt to get over there to see if we can see anything because we had nothing but rain-cooled air uh, back where we was uh, east of Cedarville. So again, uh, right now, this uh, camera uh, on top of the uh, roof of the mobile weather lab, uh, well, we're in a hill right now, but we're looking uh, generally off to the uh, north there. There we go, cleared some of the... Uh, higher points there and some of the trees so you can see the dark skies that we have currently uh, looking off to our north and northwest uh, not able to see anything uh, from our vantage point at this point uh, but we'll continue to go east again towards Sedan and we'll travel north to get a little closer to the storm and see if we're able to see anything with that as we get a little bit closer, Ross. Okay, thanks very much, Rodney. And just for your information, too, as you approach that storm, it does sound like emergency managers are reporting a wall cloud with that storm to the southwest of the Howard area, and the tornado warning does continue. We often uh, mention wall cloud. If you're not familiar, that is basically a lowering of the cloud base. Uh, not uncommon to see those with big thunderstorms. And then funnel clouds and perhaps maybe a tornado will develop out of the wall cloud. So really the wall cloud kind of gives us an early heads up that the storm might go on and produce something beyond what it is doing right now. But again, a wall cloud reported with that Elk County storm, still where the radar is uh, pretty intense with the rotation that we're looking at just to the south and west of the Howard area. As far as the distance, because it's so it's easy to lose track of, you know, how far is this from Howard? Uh, just our sampling here is about six or seven miles to the south of Howard. And again, wall cloud does sound like it has been confirmed now with this Elk County storm. It's now north of Moline, uh, safely away from the Granola area. And now it looks like uh, the tornado warning being adjusted here it does include Howard and areas to the north of there. So kind of picking up on some roads here. Here's road uh, 14. That's well north of Howard. Here's road 20. Again, it may not mean much to most people watching, but if you live in this area, you're going to quickly be able to identify, okay, that's where it is. And the rotation is, well, let's see here. As far as the distance, we mentioned Howard a little while ago, but in terms of distance from road 20 back to the 
area of concern about seven miles there and from Howard again as we get in a little closer we're still about six or seven miles back to the southwest of town again wall cloud lowering of the cloud base often is rotating and then we'll see if a funnel or a tornado develops out of that if it does it's going to be south of Howard and right now west of Highway 99 that is the strongest signature that we have on the radar at the present time if you're in the path you'll find sufficient protection by getting below ground if that's not an option to you, bathrooms and closets, we mention those quite often because they're usually interior and you have a lot of walls that surround you. They're also uh, usually tend to be fairly small. You want to be in a small room, if at all possible. And by doing so, you're just going to increase your level of protection if, in fact, the storm does produce a tornado. You want to stay away from windows and doors because, as some of you have experienced maybe firsthand, in tornado situations, broken glass that's flying around at sometimes 100, 150 miles per hour is often quite deadly. And so the radar signature now starting to ramp back up. The rotation looks like it's getting a little stronger here just to the south of the Howard area. And we'll see if this uh, storm goes on to do anything beyond what it is right now. But this area that we're looking at just to the north of Moline, so that would be wind blowing in toward the radar at about 60 miles per hour. And of course, the red that you're looking at just south of there, uh, opposite direction of about 57. So that tight circulation, sometimes we call it a couplet there southwest of Howard. Uh, that's what we're looking at when we're trying to assess these storms. Uh, Peyton, what do you have to add? Yeah, I just, uh, I just saw the report here. Um, Emergency management saying tornado on the ground uh, near the lake north of Moline. So that kind of matches up with uh, what Ross was just saying there with the rotation uh, increasing a little bit. So just wanted to uh, pass that along to you, Ross. Okay, thanks very much, Peyton. So it does sound like we now have a confirmed tornado uh, with that storm there in the Moline area or just north of Moline uh, based on where we have it. So kind of in between two uh, towns here, Howard and Moline. This is Elk County. For those of you watching in Wichita, you're saying, well, where is this in relation to where I'm at? Uh, just to kind of back things out here, and then we'll immediately go back in on that storm in Elk County. So Wichita there, this is the Kansas Turnpike. There's uh, 35 going south out of Wichita, and now popping up there on the screen, the tornado warning taking on a slightly different appearance as we have it set up to do that when we get a confirmed tornado. So it's south of Howard. If you're in this area, we just went through the safety information minutes ago. But that area north of Moline and south of Howard is a very dangerous place to be right now. From a radar standpoint, it's really impossible to pick up on where the circulation is. This heavy rain is wrapping all the way around the tornado. And so chasers and spotters, uh, anybody that lives in this area that goes out on their front porch to try to see it, it's going to be impossible to see because you've got all this heavy precipitation that goes all the way around the storm and acts like a curtain and kind of blocks your view of what's actually taking place. So that's why we have to switch over into this red and green mode of the radar. This is the wind mode. This is what's happening inside the storm. And where the green shows up, that's wind that's going in toward Wichita. The red is where it's blowing away. And you get that counterclockwise circulation there just to the south of Howard and north of Moline, there's highway, or I should say road 14, which again may not mean much to most of us uh, that are not familiar with this area, but if you live there, you're quickly going to be able to identify now, what area we are talking about, and this is, again, to the south of the Howard vicinity, uh, right in through this area, north of Moline by about three miles, south of Howard by about three miles. And if you're in Howard, again, we can't stress it enough, you need to be seeking shelter if you have not done so already. The storm is coming in from the south and should be there within the next couple of minutes. Again, below ground. Uh, storm shelters, uh, if you live in a mobile home, those are not good places to try to ride out a storm, believe it or not. You know, uh, still, tornado winds are no match for mobile homes. It's often hard to hear sometimes that if you live in a mobile home, my particular place of uh, shelter from most weather is not the place to be during a tornado. You're actually safer getting into a ditch than you would be trying to ride this out in a mobile home. But some mobile home areas have designated storm shelters, and if you can get there now, that would be what I would do to try to ride out this storm. But it does sound like we do have a confirmed tornado now just to the south of Howard, north of Moline. You can see the red and the greens uh, right next to each other there, just a couple of miles to the south of Howard. Now remember, in real time, 
versus what we're showing you on radar, there's going to be a bit of a lag. The radar has to sample the storm, it comes back, gets processed by a computer, and by the time we can showcase it to you on the air, it's actually going to be just a little further along. So you have to keep that in mind as we uh, look at these uh, situations here. But the circulation and the tornado uh, now moving in on, uh, this is going to be moving in on the uh, Howard area. And uh, Peyton, you might check on this, sounds like they're... Uh, going to oh. put out a new tornado warning for Chautauqua County here shortly, uh, so we'll have you check on that in just a second. But again, if you're in Howard, again, the tornado is now moving in on you, and you only have another minute or two to find shelter from this storm there in uh, the Elk County vicinity. Tornado warning does continue for this particular area. Uh, Peyton, you got some new information on the Chautauqua storm? Yeah, uh, tornado warning sounds like it's going to come down here any second. We're kind of watching this area uh, coming out of northern sections of Oklahoma. As we look at the uh, wind mode on Doppler radar, there is an area of rotation uh, showing up. There it is. Uh, right there on the state line in the southeastern part of Sumner County, and that'll cross, or sorry, Cowley County, I should say, and that'll cross into the western part of uh, Chautauqua County uh, here in a bit. Uh, the way it looks right now, it is a radar indicated rotation, so no confirmation of a tornado uh, with this thunderstorm at this point. Uh, but if you live in Cedarvale, uh, now would be the time uh, to play it safe, take your tornado precautions. As, as we've seen this environment today, it has already produced tornadoes, uh, so this thunderstorm could easily produce one. And kind of notice what we're looking at, too. Uh, this storm is on the far eastern edge of this whole cluster. Uh, so it's really feeding in that warm, humid air from the south. And that uh, kind of increases the potential for tornadoes uh, versus the storms farther west, where the temperatures are a little bit cooler now. So uh, still here, it looks like, uh, especially Elk and Chautauqua counties, is going to be the highest uh, near-term severe weather threat. And then potentially extending up into parts of Greenwood County. Uh, we'll have to see how that evolves. Uh, here over the course of the next hour or so. Uh, so again, two tornado warnings in effect right now. Uh, one there for much of Elk County and that new one here for portions of Cowley and Chautauqua counties. Pull up the latest information on that. That goes until 5.15 p.m. So again, Cedarvale in the path of that thunderstorm. Uh, we'll continue to monitor it as it lifts northeast. Ross? All right, thanks, Peyton. Uh, again, we continue to keep our focus uh, right here on Howard. We do have pictures coming in from the Mobile Weather Lab. Uh, Rodney will try to bring him back on the line here shortly, but they were efforting a chance to get up uh, to this storm that's in Elk County at the moment, where, again, we do have confirmation of a tornado. That is going to be this big uh, red circle that's showing up. That's exactly where the report came in, which, of course, was southwest of Howard, but now the storm is right over Howard, so you're kind of out of time to find a place of safety as the storm and the potential uh, tornado passes overhead. Now, we don't know if it's going right through the town of Howard. It's way too early to try to uh, figure that sort of thing out, but Howard is exactly where we're picking up on it from a radar standpoint. Uh, you can see just how bright these colors are right over Howard. You've got the wind that's going in toward Wichita. That's the radar that we're using. Red is where it's blowing away. And right there is the circulation passing right over Howard, moving to the north. So areas next in line will include, well, there's uh, Road 18. And, of course, this is 19 or 99 Highway that's going north out of Howard. It's going to be right there along the highway there. So anybody that lives in Howard or north of Howard here in Elk County, you should be already sheltered from this storm. Again, a very dangerous system that's now moving through your area. Tornado warning continues, and uh, we'll be uh, checking in with Rodney here just as soon as we can. They were trying to get uh, from around the Cedarvale area and come up on the storm that's in in uh, the Elk County area. So we can continue to look at pictures coming from the Mobile Weather Lab. And again, as they try to find a different position, uh, this kind of gives you another view to uh, something that has probably become more of a problem than it has of help in a lot of ways. There's just a significant number of people that go out on the roads and try to be storm chasers and spotters in, on days like today. So you're kind of getting a feel for what they're dealing with out there on the road. And they kind of now moving into some open country, which doesn't really look like there are too many vehicles on the road at the present time, but to me, what's probably in front of them are more storm chasers, and we do see a lot of them uh, congregating here in the Central Plains on days like today uh, because 
this is obviously a really good place to get good visuals on storms and sometimes we have too many chasers out there and it kind of clogs up the roadways but they're efforting a chance to get up into Elk County to see uh, if they can provide some more information tornado warning does continue for Elk County uh, because we did get that report of a tornado that was north of Moline and in the Howard area and if you're just joining our coverage this afternoon what has been missing and what has not been reported at all so far significant damage. We're going to hope that holds up. Of course, our newsroom uh, efforting a chance to try to get some updated information as these storms move out of the area. If we do have any damage, they'll be finding out about it first. But we have certainly not seen any reports coming into the storm center suggesting that the tornadoes today have hit anything of significance. Uh, we'll see if that holds up again. It's still very early in the afternoon and soon to be early evening. But Howard and North on Highway 99, that is where we're picking up on the strong signature potential tornado. Again, we did get one reported that was in just to the northwest of the Moline area. And now as we go in a little bit closer here to bring on some more roads so we can try to figure out exactly where this thing is. Uh, boy, it's really right over Howard right now. You see Road 18, there's Road 15, and Highway 99. It looks to me like from Howard and just east of 99 is where the strongest signatures continue to be at this hour. And that's uh, something that you'll need to keep in mind here and be sheltered until the storm clears the area. Peyton? Yeah, well, let's get you an update here on the uh, other tornado warning that we have real quick. And this just came out, eastern parts of Cowley into western parts of Chautauqua County. Uh, rotation doesn't look as significant with uh, this thunderstorm, so that's at least some current good news. That could change at any moment. Uh, but what we're looking at here is kind of some broad rotation to the southwest of Cedarvale. And this thunderstorm is lifting up toward the northeast at about 45 miles per hour. So go ahead and put a storm track on it as it does so and as it will track through the eastern part of uh, Cowley into portions of western um, uh, Chautauqua County. Uh, that'll put it near Cedarvale here within the next 10 minutes and we'll continue to watch that as it lifts toward the northeast. So heads up in Cedarvale, uh, you are in the path of this. Again, not a guarantee that this is going to produce a tornado, but we have seen the environment already today in this part of Kansas produce tornadoes. And given that uh, broad area of circulation that we see on radar, uh, that's the reason why the National Weather Service did go ahead and uh, issue uh, that tornado warning. So we'll keep a close uh, watch on that. Again, that tornado warning does continue uh, as we'll keep watching that as it lifts toward the northeast. Ross. All right. Thanks very much, Peyton. Again, keeping a lot of our focus here on a storm that does have and about 15 minutes ago did produce a tornado. Uh, we don't know if it's an ongoing situation there in Elk County, but we'll certainly find out here momentarily because uh, Rodney and Adrian are coming up from the south. I believe they're going to be on Highway 99 here shortly, kind of getting in behind the storm. So if it's moving away from Howard and they're approaching from the south, they'll be in a pretty good position to see, do we have any damage in the wake of this storm? And is it still producing a tornado at the moment? We're going to hope that it is not, but we cannot sound the all clear for the Howard Howard area and locations north of Howard there in Elk County and Severy up here into southern sections of Greenwood County you need to be mindful of what's happening south of you we've got a big storm here that does continue to rotate uh, possibility of some substantial hail and if the storm does maintain the intensity that it's at right now there is a chance that that will make its way into southern Greenwood County in the next 20 to 30 minutes so we'll continue to see if that's going to hold up and maintain the intensity that it does have at the moment as we kind of expand the view it's been a little while since we've looked at a regional picture just to kind of bring Wichita into view other areas of south central Kansas most of the severe weather threat is kind of shifting now south and east of the turnpike and we believe that's probably going to be uh, the ongoing situation here over the next several hours as you get more of the rough weather uh, shifting away from the metro area. There have been storms up on I-70. A lot of active weather still happening in Oklahoma too, which is moving northeast and something that we'll continue to also carefully monitor over the next several hours. But at least in the short term, greatest concern right now in Elk County and then of course western Chautauqua County where that new tornado warning went up. But as far as confirmation of a tornado happening at the moment, Again, it's still very much right here in Elk County to the north of Howard. You can almost pick out that hook 
that's showing up on the radar east of 99. This is, again, the regular mode of radar that we so often show in our broadcasts of where the heavy rain is coming down, the hail too, and right there is the hook that's showing up, but you get a better uh, feeling for what's happening inside the storm when we go over to the wind and show you the almost blue colors now. That's the strong wind that's going to from, or basically from east to west, and then your red colors down here below the town of Howard is where wind is blowing from west to east. And so that counterclockwise circulation that's depicted by the radar, that's what gets our attention as meteorologists, usually prompts the warning. You know, when it comes to tornado warnings, they can come down based on two accounts. It can be somebody sees something, or of course, in this situation today, you've got radar that's sampling a pretty strong rotation that's happening now just to the east of the Howard area. Just a reminder,